who is actually the best Nigerian label executive of all time? Now, after like doing my bits and bobs and whatever, I was thinking, okay, let's rate it in terms of, it's not about numbers. Okay, like everything plays a small part. How many people you bring through, how many people you put on. If somebody blows, the magnitude of the quote-unquote blowing, do you know what I mean, and whatever. So this is my list off top. Number one of all time is Kenny's music. So that's Kenny and D1. Um, number two, Don Jazzy. Slash Maven. And then I didn't know where to go with number three. And I was like, okay, I need to ask you because number three, ideally, because of after listening off to um, David's track, I was just going to go with OBR, this type of OBR next, because of how much the, the movement is, you know, the collectedness, the chains, the this, the that, how much the streets love him. But I remember you always tell me about Alamide. Alamide has broken a dick on the gold, Lil Cash, Fireboy right now, Fresh Who Else? If I've forgotten any. Phil's. Phil's. Okay. So I was thinking maybe Alamde could be my number three. But then there's Aldu um, of Chocolate City. Yeah. Aldu, Corey, I think. And his was M.I., Jesse Jags, I Sprints, Brimer. <clears throat> and you have Banky, obviously, with, you know, with Wizkid and Skills. But, I mean, look at Wizkid. Like, do you know what I mean? So how do you... Then that's what I'm saying. So we need to find a way to say, I'm just putting out all the names out there. There's Banky. Then you have Capitol Hill with your Clarence Peters, where they've had, um, and your Bliss, where they've had, um, and then you have Storm. Yeah. Um, did Obi Asika, would you say he broke, um, did he break NATO? Or was NATO already on his way? NATO, I know Sasha was already a household name, but obviously the whole Storm thing, NATO, Sasha, Ikechuku, I'll say it has to be Jazzy. No, because Jazzy's the number one. My number one and two is Jazz, uh, Kenny's music, Jazzy, but maybe three might be Olami Day, but I don't know about my three. Yeah. Your no, number one is Jazzy. One is Jazzy. Nobody in Africa is touching that guy and can ever do what he did. Now, let me tell you why. Do you know what it means to control the production of one day? Sid, well, well, my question is label executive. Okay, so we now we now need to know who was the actual executive Mohits. Yeah, so if he was doing production at the same, okay, fair. If he's doing production at the same time, that's on him. But I don't yeah. like. I kind of feel like he was the one orchestrating a lot of decisions. That's how I feel. Because yeah. he wasn't the band. It wasn't Sid. It wasn't one day. So if I'm just looking at Mohits as five of them. I'm just gonna say Jazzy was like the exec in that situation. And we can say all five at least all had hits and popped and had a key. Bro, forget like, hits. All had successful albums that are classics. She you know what I'm saying? So that's five. Okay. For sure. Yeah, man. I don't even think I don't think anyone would anyone would yeah, man. So then post post that, then okay, then obviously Maven Times. Corey Day. Time, you know, you look at you look at his involvement in in Watch the Throne. You look at what he, you know, the singles he did. Even even after even after him and the band like part ways, he also did like um, Oliver Twist, which broke barriers in UK. That's the biggest Nigerian charting song in UK ever. Facts, but does that fall under best label executive? I'm not talking about best producer. Yeah, I'm talking about best. Saying, but like, yeah, it's confusing actually, but. <laughs> Because he's still breaking artists, so yeah. I'm, still like, I'm looking at it like the artists he helped break, yeah. They are still, he's the head of the tree. So he has to get everything like it's a tree. So if the branches are bringing forth fruits, it's mm. still, it still has to be connected to that head. Do you understand what I'm saying? Classic fresh. <laughs> if the head now happens to be a producer, then that's just a plus for the head. Fair. But Dazzy was definitely the one saying, we should do this. Let this be like this. You wear this for sure. Well, definitely one thing on that, I'm sure. And that guy's very, very creative, man. Because even with like with what we're seeing, even down to Rema, still connected to Jazzy. Yes, yeah. so he has been able to like, like work with people from the streets. Like one day there was a guy from Moshe that just had a voice. No money, wasn't attractive, didn't know a single soul, end up making him a star. 
Do you know what I'm saying? The band was always the outgoing guy, one new loud, not the best singer or rapper, but the best entertainer because it was produced well. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bruh, so many things. Maybe even like Jazzy, his voice, like, but yeah, man, let's not even get into like production and all that, but on, a, on an exact level, I'll, I'll still say Jazzy is number one. Um, for number two, I feel like people don't even really put whoever was exec at Square Records because I don't know they P Square. Somebody oh, was writing their piece. Music, the amount of artists they broke. Come on. Thing is that okay? Who was on that Kenny's music? Come on, bro. The first guys in our gen to break to break the artist internationally. Two Face. Yeah. That thing with that African queen. Yeah. You have, you have your Idris Abdul Karim. You have your Plantation Boys, which is obviously okay. No, 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 no Plantation Boys. Sorry, Idris Abdul Karim, Kenny Saint Brown, which is the guy's sister. Um, okay. The thing is uh, that I would like to come back here to talk about them when I have more information because those guys were before. I won't say that before my time, but I literally started listening to like I was introduced to Afrobeat through more hits. Yeah. I never listened to Idris, even like Two Face, like the old stuff. I had no idea. They had Baba D, which is Sound Sultan's brother. Mm. Um, OJB Jezreel. If you know OJB Jezreel, that's the producer, like Two Faces producer, who okay. passed away. Rest in peace. OJB legendary producer. Um, Casey Presh. So everybody knows Casey. But when he was in the group, it was Casey Presh. That's it. Well, you just all people you name now, very, very solid. That's very solid, actually. Yeah. But with those people, were they already like those people and they got signed, or they literally helped them develop to being those people? Yeah, of course, they helped Two Face. Come on, like Plantation Boys were like obviously like local guys or whatever, but of course, they, do you know what I mean? Of course, they helped Two Face. And mm-hmm. growing up like, as a kid, that's the first like night tune in our own time that went international. Do you know what I mean? Um, of course. They helped Sound Sultan. Of course, they helped his brother Baba D. Of course, they they helped Tony Tatula. Like if any of those Tony Tatula or, or or even your your on your based on sample, based on you know Nigeria Jaga, just from Idris Abdul Karim. So yeah. yeah, of course, of course they played a part. Yeah, so I guess I guess they could be second actually. I just had to give them, you know more hits yeah. house my one man like <laughs> your more hits Kenneth. Yeah, Kenneth, because Kenneth them is foundation. Okay, cool. So then, yeah. what's number three? That was always like the debate for me. Who's number three? And I'm sure there's some that we can't three, remember. Three may actually even be no, not these people are not three. But I'm just saying, I look at Triple MG with Iyaya and Techno. And we'll be, with I think it's not talk about exec. I feel like you just like compare like labels. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, bro. Yeah, you know, because when I look at like the force, I think three has to just be David, but I can't now say David is like number three exec in Nigeria. Well, originally, I was thinking of David, like when I was just because he just started off from me listening to David's art. Yeah. But from now saying, okay, yeah, minus the whole hype and whatever around David, which artist has David broken other than Mayo Kun? Okay. Now, because, because these people are not as big, you can't say he didn't break them. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. If you're doing it, yeah, in- David, David has done David has a point based system, like a point based system. If Mayo Kuhn has, David, has say- Mayo Kuhn, and Mayo Kuhn is like this, no, on the level of I'm not three, I'm not talking about the artists he signed, I'm talking about oh. the features David does, almost like he's breaking the artists. No, you got no. I'm talking about David. You have to include that now. <laughs> Bias, how do how do you include? If I talk about label executive and like label, no, they can't be on an exec because see, let me tell you something here. Yeah. If if David is able to hear a run town song, and at this time run town only had one or two songs, but it wasn't like big in Africa. For, it wasn't even that big, probably in Nigeria, right? And he's able to hear Golado. And do what he did on that song. One can say that he helped to break run town in different markets. Yeah, but that puts us in a debate whereby Kenny's music and co can't even like how do they compete in that? Like 
guys who aren't singers. They just like as a label, like who were the guys facilitating for their own home team. I'm talking yeah. about David. David has at least he signed at least nine artists in his time. Yeah, because if, if you judge it that way, then it's kind of unfair because all what is that, because even because like it's kind of unfair. So at the end of the day, that means that you have to just go by how many artists from Level Blue. Yeah, that's I wouldn't really say that's the way to judge an exec. I wouldn't say that. I'm talking about the best. My question is the best. You need to open the documents. The best label exec, of course, home team. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying, bro. If 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 the guy from Kenny's music, Kenny, right? Yeah. If he's number two or number one, yeah. But then. After African Queen, Two Face just decided to not even put in the work or whatever. It doesn't mean this guy wasn't still a good exec. What I'm just trying to say is that to take to take somebody from Twitter, Mayoko. Yeah, don't bring Twitter into that. You have to look at how they broke the artists as well now. <laughs> no, I don't care. I don't care how they broke it. This is tw- this is twenty first century. You can, you can find them on Twitter. I don't care how you broke it. Take Twitter away, bro. <laughs> Um, nah, I, I, I don't know. Man. The narrative, man. I'm going straight to the juice, like because what I'm saying is, the point I'm trying to make is, if you if you list Alameda, okay. Fault, if I'm looking at like a, graph, I'm, like a graph, it's not my fault if you choose to sign rappers. That's not okay, my. Fault. If I, if me, if I'm looking at, if I'm looking at Peruzzi and all the hits Peruzzi has written for David and other artists, I'm looking for me or Kong, and I'm looking for all the hits that Sheezy has produced, I'm giving David credit of those three people. No, but post, when Sheezy them, when Sheezy is not working- He knew Sheezy because of David. When Sheezy is not working with David, or when- um, he, he, David broke Sheezy now, come on. Post that, Sheezy's moves don't have to have anything to do with David. But if, if David broke Sheezy, and David's studio was where Sheezy was really meeting people and really learning with David. Because David too was an engineer and a producer, so they were doing things together. So we can only count the records that Sheezy produced while he was with David. Fair enough, yeah, fair enough. Okay, like what Sheezy chooses to do post David. Some of Sheezy's biggest, if Sheezy was to do a versus now with 20 or 10 songs even, half of it would definitely be things through David or with David for sure. Try but that is the remix, you know how it is now? They would do a remix with someone from SA that'll be a big song who's going to produce it fresh or spiritual and they're under him. So those times too, Shizzy was doing a lot of all those features. Okay, so with David, is, it, is his work more producer based and writer based? Yeah, for sure. And funding, you know, having the vision, having the resources to execute. These are things that, you know, label heads should really have now. Even like that's why Diddy is one of the best execs as well. Because Diddy will tell you this song should be like this. He wants to be involved in the production. He wants to shoot the video and pay for it. He wants to put you in this type of room. And that's why I'm saying Jazzy has to be number one. The so I'm not saying that. So, so we say okay, David crosses out. You say David crosses out Audu. I'm saying that for sure. Okay, so now David crosses out obviously Banky because Banky obviously tried and, and then uh, Banky. Banky broke Wiz, Scales, and you know he was one of the, probably one of the first guys to sign a DJ. At that time, no one was really you know him signing to the exclusive and exclusive was one of the first DJs to even have a song featuring artists and all that. So that was the pioneer that kind of vibe, which was dope. But I'm putting David over Banky, hundred percent. I can say that anytime. I'm putting David over Banky. I'll do and Banky knock out. Now. Does David knock out Capital Capital Hill? That's with um, Fino and. And uh, Sparrow, Moch, I said Sparrow, sorry, Mochad and those cats. Uh, I would say so, man. Perfect. Does David cancel out Storm? Breaking, not breaking, but helping two rappers get to a level is very hard. The fact that King Big Deal can be compared to any pop song by a singer is a very big deal. The fact, that, <laughs> the fact that they were the first to start giving them, going clubbing on the island, making this whole lifestyle thing cool, partnering with brands. Bruh, NATO alone, no one from DMW or HKN has done what NATO did, in my opinion. 
Shout out to all the execs in Nige. It's definitely not easy. You know, we definitely respect the OGs. You're top today. three again. Your top three. Your top three again. Our top three execs. Don Jazzy, Kenny's Music, Davido. <laughs> <laughs> mine is, mine is uh, Kenny's Music, Don Jazzy. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. It's actually hard. I think I think you're right, Storm. Uh, Peace my- out, y'all. All right, man. All right. Bless, bless up, bless up. OAF pod, you know what it is. The Alternative Network.